a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, after 14 years, I again went up to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along also. I went up in accord with a revelation, and I presented to them the gospel that I preached to the Gentiles, but privately to those of repute, so that I might not be running or have run in vain. On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter to the circumcised, for the one who worked in Peter for an apostolate to the circumcised worked also in me for the Gentiles. And when they recognized the grace bestowed upon me, James and Cephas and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave me and Barnabas their right hands in partnership, that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. Only we were to be mindful of the poor, which is the very thing that I was eager to do. And when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he clearly was wrong. For until some people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he began to draw back and separated himself because he was afraid of the circumcised. And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him, with the result that even Barnabas was carried away by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not on the right road, in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in front of all, If you, though a Jew, are living like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? The word of the Lord. Thanks, God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. For steadfast is his kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Lucam. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us and do not subject us to the final test. Verbum Domini. (laughs) 
This past Saturday, we had a wonderful EWTN family celebration in Phoenix, and we really enjoyed meeting, I think it was over 3,000 people came for that event and meeting so many of our family out there in the Phoenix area, and some had driven as far as from Minnesota. I met a couple driven all the way from Minnesota just to be at that event, another couple from Utah had driven down some eight hours, I think it was, and others that it came from other states that wanted to be there for this uh, celebration that we had. And so many people told us, you got us through COVID. And one lady told me that she had been isolated in her house for 15 months, but she could turn to EWTN, her family here. And I'm always filled with gratitude when I hear these testimonies, and I know our employees too, who put in so many efforts and preparations for this uh, event, and the wonderful talks that were given by Father Mitch and Marcus Grody and, and Jeanette and uh, Christina, Christalina Everett and so many others, that it really edifies us too and all the others behind the cameras and so on to hear these testimonies of how this network is a blessing. So I'm always filled with gratitude, realizing that God continues to use this network as an instrument of his mercy, an instrument of his mercy in this time when we're so much in need of his mercy. And in today's gospel, Jesus speaks, and we hear, Luke's account of the Lord's Prayer has just five petitions. It's a shorter version. The one that we're most familiar with is from Matthew's Gospel. But it, both of them begin with the word Father. And in the Old Testament, it was typical if God was referred to as Father, that it was in relation to the whole people of Israel. He's the father of the whole people of Israel. But Jesus is showing us something more intimate about the father, that we can address him regularly, personally, individually, in our prayer. And earlier in Luke's gospel, we hear how Jesus will say, be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful. That's his so-called Sermon on the Plain in Luke chapter 6. Be merciful just as your heavenly Father is merciful. In Luke chapter 15, we had Luke chapter 11, but Luke 15, we have this account of the finding of the lost things, the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son or prodigal son. And others have called this parable the parable of the merciful father. Pope, John, Pope St. John Paul II, in fact, used this parable of the prodigal son, the merciful father, for his apostolic exhortation, Dives in Misericordia, rich in mercy, rich in mercy, to speak about the father's mercy. And so today we're celebrating the feast of St. Faustina. And she is the first saint canonized in this millennium, the first of the new millennium. And Pope St. John Paul II canonized her. And what day did he canonize her? April 30th, 2000, the year 2000. Why did he choose that date? It was the second Sunday of Easter, also and now forever known as Divine Mercy Sunday. So she would be the first one, and he did that with his express intention, as he said in his homily, why he wanted to do this, to make this act of canonizing St. Faustina as the first saint of this new millennium. He says, we look back at the 20th century and the atrocities, the horrors of World War I, World War II, so many other things that took place. 
things that he personally experienced living in Poland and how Faustina is placed between World War I and World War II. She, in fact, lived from 1905 to 1938. She was 33 years old, same age as our Lord, when she died. But she receives these revelations of God's mercy, writes this diary of divine mercy in between those two world wars. And so he sees it as a bridge from the previous millennium, previous 1,000 years, to the next one, this message of divine mercy, that it's like a light, a light in the clouds that often surround us. So he said this, <clears throat> he said, Jesus fa told Faust, Sister Faustina, this is from his homily of that day of his can the canonization, Jesus told Sister Faustina, humanity will not find peace until it turns trustfully to divine mercy. He speaks of her as the bridge that offers a ray of light to the men and women of our time. And he asked the question then, what will the years ahead bring us? What will man's future on earth be like? We are not given to know. We know some of it, the first 20 years, 22. But he continued, however, it is certain that in addition to new progress, there will unfortunately be no lack of painful experiences. You know, in some of the people that I talked to out there in Phoenix, it was evident just some of the pain that they're struggling with, with the challenges of our time. And they just seemed to be so burdened. And they came there looking for a message of hope, some help, a word to help them continue on the journey. And it was remarkable to me after speaking with a woman was talking about some of the difficulties and just the heaviness that seemed to be upon her that later I saw her that day and she'd received the sacrament of mercy, of confession, attended talks, that she seemed just everything was lifted up. There was a new heart, there was a new hope that she had. And that's what the Lord does. You know, in the diary of St. Faustina, it's a conversation between a soul and Jesus. And so in this diary, here's the soul. The soul is saying this, my Lord, I am also discouraged because neither my superiors nor my confessor understand my interior trials. A darkness clouds my mind. How can I advance? All this discourages me from striving for the heights of sanctity. And Jesus answered, well, my child, this time you have told me a good deal. I realize how painful it is not to be understood, and especially by those whom one loves and with whom one has to be open. But suffice it to know that I understand all your troubles and misery. I am pleased by the deep faith you have despite everything. Learn from this that no one will understand a soul entirely. That is beyond human ability. Therefore, I have remained on earth to comfort your aching heart and to fortify your soul so that you will not falter on the way. You say that a dense darkness is obscuring your mind, but why at such times do you not come to me, the light who can in an instant pour into your soul more understanding about holiness than can be found in any books? No confessor is capable of teaching and enlightening a soul in this way. A suffering soul is closest to my heart. Last night, a few of the friars, and uh, we went to visit with the sister servants to celebrate the feast of St. Francis of Assisi, and one of the sisters, her name is Sister Faustina. 
So I said to her, you got any tidbits that I can share with the people tomorrow about St. Faustina, your patroness? And she said one of the things that especially struck her in reading Faustina's diary is that Faustina too had to grow in trust. That we sometimes think of the saints as those who didn't struggle. This kind of illustrates, right, what I just read, the struggles that she had too. But that she too had to advance and to grow in trust. And you know that these things, and that she too had to be changed by the mercy of God, to be changed and transformed by his grace, to become, as she became, the secretary of his mercy, the apostle of his mercy. And that always gives us heart. Mother Angelica always talked about that too, that we can see the saints struggled too, to persevere, to continue in trust, to grow in trust with the challenges, the darkness that sometimes can be overwhelming to us. But Jesus said to Faustina, he said, you, a, a dark, darkness is obscuring your mind. Why at such times do you not come to me? The light who can in an instant pour into your soul more understanding than can be found in any books. So let's learn to look to him. Pope St. John Paul II, he said this about, in his homily on the canonization of St. Faustina, and he's speaking about being able to love others more genuinely, more generously. And he said, it's not easy to love with a deep love, which lies in the authentic gift of self. This love can only be learned by penetrating the mystery of God's love, looking at him, being one with him, with his fatherly heart. Then we are able to look with new eyes at our brothers and sisters. So Jesus, when he's asked, Lord, teach us to pray. They knew, when they saw Jesus pray, they knew there's something going on here. There's this, this depth that he has, this union that's going on. We want that. Don't we all want that? And so, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray today. He says, say, Father. And think about that, the Father, who he is that he loves each of us with a personal love. So he wants us to regularly call upon the Father as Father. And in Luke's Gospel, as I said, again and again, the element of his Father, the heart that comes out is his mercy. The Holy Father concluded his, his homily by saying, speaking about those who have lost all confidence in life, and are tempted to give in to despair. He said to them, the gentle face of Christ is offered. Those rays from his heart touch them and shine upon them, warm them, show them the way, and fill them with hope. How many souls have been consoled by the prayer, Jesus, I trust in you which providence intimated through Faustina. This simple act of abandonment to Jesus dispels the thickest clouds and lets a ray of light penetrate every life. Jesus, I trust in you. When life is overwhelming, when temptation assails you, when darkness clouds your mind, just repeat that prayer Look at that divine mercy image. And the Lord said, why do you just give in to the darkness? Look at me. Come to me. That's what Pope St. John Paul II, that's what St. Faustina, the apostle of divine mercy, teaches us.